People often ask me, what's the best way of letting go? Well, after two decades of teaching worldwide and thousands of hours of individual coaching, I can say from my experience, the techniques and principles that I use are the most powerful that I know of. So in this video, I'm going to share them with you. Hi, I'm David Elzey, international instructor of the Sedona Method and creator of Soul Coaching. In this video, I'll be showing you four basic techniques of letting go. And I'll just touch on the fifth way, which I'll do another video of, which actually has its seeds in ancient wisdom traditions. So with that, if you're ready, let's get started. Number one, let's call this the calm pond or ocean of water before there's turbulence. So this is our basic nature. There is a, a silence or a stability or a a quietude that is often found when we're free of the emotionality that we feel. So what ends up happening is the first way of letting go is to notice the sense of lack that we have. We have these driving senses of lack, not having enough control or wanting love or approval or safety. There's a number of them, but they all rise and cause this calm to become a wave, an emotion, basically. So the wanting creates all emotions. The sense of lack creates our emotionality. So the emotion does this as a result of the sense of lack or wanting. I want this, I want that, I want my security, I want my, my love or approval from others. And it causes the emotion. When we let go here of the sense of lack, there is more of a sense of calm and the water can even out. And this does not mean weakness, by the way. The ocean has infinite power deep within it. So this basically gives you ability, the ability to be more at peace but also have power available whenever you need it. Power to live, have passion and love. So that's the first. The second is called holistic releasing. I'm gonna ask you a question. If I'm pointing up, what is that the opposite of? Obviously, down. So things come in pairs in the sense of, in order for you to know this, it has to be compared to what is something other than that. So if my hand is here, if my whole hand were the frame, you wouldn't see my hand. There has to be absence of hand and hand in order for either one to be known. So it's the same with emotions. If I'm really angry, I actually know what it feels like not to be angry. That's how I can recognize that I'm angry. So if I allow myself to be that fully, and then also allow myself to be its opposite, I allow myself to be loving or present, and then angry, then present, then angry, then present, then angry, then present or loving. That actually cancels the two out, and there's an evenness or a clarity or what I call a centeredness that is the result of holistic releasing. The third is called diving in. I'm going to use another prop. I was in Taiwan a number of years ago and bought this beautiful mask. Hello. Beautiful mask. Now, it appears solid like our emotions appear very solid, very real. In fact, they seem like ultimate reality. But when we really check and we look through or dive in or what I call pierce the surface of what seems to be solid, we discover that underneath, underneath the, the justification for the emotion, the belief systems, the levels of sensation and memories about the emotion, if we go beneath those layers, we dive in, we begin to discover again at the core of all emotions is still going to be a centered peace or calm or clarity. And that happens if we dive through the layers of what we believe otherwise. So diving in is the third one. And the fourth is called welcoming. And it looks like this. If you're here, but I'm not welcoming to you, this is what that looks like. And that's about what life ends up being. You're there, I'm here, there's separation. There's a sense of pushing against. The nature of life is in the universe is if I push you, you're most likely going to push back. So if I push against my emotions, I'm not welcoming them or allowing them or even acknowledging their presence. So when we actually do that for a moment, we open and relax. Feelings don't have the Velcro. They don't have something pushing against for them to stick to. So when we drop our resistance or we allow ourselves to welcome, the, the feelings have the space to do what they do, which is dissolve or disintegrate in general. So that's welcoming. So letting go of the wants or the sense of lack holistic releasing, diving in, and welcoming. Those are the four fundamental ways of letting go in the Sedona method. Now the fifth way is called the fifth way profoundly because there's four that go before. So it's the fifth way. Nothing more profound than that. But it does turn your attention from the object that you're letting go of to the you which is aware of 
the object and the infinite nature of that. So in another video, I'll talk about that. In the meantime, I hope this was useful to you if you're a veteran of, of the Sedona Method and letting go, or if you're new to it, I hope it serves you in your happiness and living a more fulfilled life. All my best.